Hey YouTube, I'm back again with a, another video in the DIY Bluetooth speaker build. This is a series showing you how to build a Bluetooth speaker. So if you want to know how, stay tuned. Because what we're talking about now is how to hook up the internal components. This is everything you'll see inside the speaker unit when it is finished. The reason why we're showing you now how to hook it up is because it's going to be very hard to show you later. Um, this is going to give you the basics of understanding how to hook everything up. This is kind of comprehensive, meaning that you don't have to use these exact parts. We're going to kind of walk you through so you have an idea of what parts you actually need. First, you need two speakers. At least two speakers, and these are the two speakers we're going to be using. These are the ones that we cannibalized from that Athena earlier, so if you didn't watch those videos, you can take a look at those. This is the Lapai amplifier, which we've already reviewed and talked pretty much in depth about. And so take a look at that if you need to. This is a power cord. You'll notice that it is a power cord with two male ends on it. They're both the exact same ends. These are a 2.5 by 5.5 millimeter end on either side. The reason being is because both the Shure amplifier and the Lapai amplifier both take a 2.5 by 5.5 amp. I'm sorry, power cord. And this is a power plug-in. This will be on the back of the box, which we will plug our power cord into, which is here. This is the power cord that came with the Lapai amplifier. And that's going to be running everything. It is a 12 volt, 3 amp uh, power supply. This is the uh, another power cord. Really all it is is two 16 gauge wires that are wrapped with a ferret cord. The ferret cord just cuts out EMI interference so we don't hear any fuzz or interference in the speakers. With two um, wire connectors on the end. Now these wire quick wire connectors right here, you're going to notice I have taped them on with electrical tape. This is not permanent, okay? Don't hook this up permanently. This is only to test and only show you how to hook these up. Uh, permanently, when we do this permanently, this will be shrink wrap. Alright, and we have a 3.5 millimeter cable. Now let's show you how to hook everything up. First you're going to do is you're going to take the amplifier and you're going to turn it around. The reason why you're going to turn around is you're going to look at the back and you're going to see how to hook everything up. It says right speaker and left speaker. The right speaker is going to be the right hand side when you're looking at the speaker box. So if this was example, the front of the speaker box and the speakers were facing this way, even though it's in my left hand, this would actually be considered the right speaker. So we'll use these. The black is negative and the red is positive. Now, on the speakers themselves, they actually show you a positive and negative. If they don't show you the positive and negative, the positive is always going to be the bigger terminal compared to the smaller terminal. The ter smaller terminal will always be the negative. So that's an easy way to remember. Now, I already have these hooked up, so I know that they are positive and negative. So, let's... Hook these in. All right, we're back and the speakers are hooked up. We've had the right speaker and the left speaker both hooked up. And if you see, they are hooked up. The negative always being the darker ones hooked up in the negative and the, the lighter one is always in the positive. That's just my personal preference. Like I said, you don't have to do that. That's just what I choose to do. Now, we're gonna wanna hook up some type of input to this. And so for this case, we're going to use this MP3 jack, which is a 3.5 millimeter stereo jack. You may recognize it. It looks like a it looks like a headphone jack because that's exactly what it is. So we're going to plug that into this side, into the MP3. And then we're going to take it to our source. Now our source in this particular thing, since we're building a Bluetooth module, is going to go to the Sure Bluetooth. I'm sorry, since we're building a Bluetooth speaker, it's going to go into the this is going to plug into the Shure Bluetooth module. And if you notice, there's two places you can hook up. You can either hook up RCA or 3.5 millimeter cable. And so we're going to hook that one up. All right. All right, now that that is hooked up, we still have a few parts left. 
We still need to get power to this. We got to figure out how to do that. The easiest way that we're going to do the power is we're going to chain the power. The power always needs to be chained, meaning it doesn't matter how you chain it. As long as power is hooked up in some way, shape, or form, you will get power to the units. The only thing that matters is how many amps you have. And in this case, we know that this takes two amps, as it says right on it, 12 volt, two amps. And this, based on the specs that we read on Parts Express, says it needs one amp. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this cable, which has a power cord on both sides, and we're literally going to just chain the two together. So we're going to plug one into this amplifier, and we're going to plug the other end into the Bluetooth, the Sure Bluetooth module. Now that we have that plugged in, you see the power is plugged in from there to there. Easy enough. Now we need to get power to the outlet. So the wall. We're going to have to try to get power from somewhere, and this is where the power is actually going to come from. The great thing is this Sure Bluetooth amplifier has right on it a separate output, which is a VCC and a ground. The VCC is positive and the ground is negative. Now, once again, these are just two wires. We're going to take this and we're going to plug it up. It's just two wires. I always use the lighter one to be the positive and the darker one to be a negative. It really doesn't matter which one you choose. You just need to choose one. And so we're going to plug that up real quick. And this, if you take a look, has screw terminals. So we're just going to use a little mini screwdriver, like so, to loosen and tighten those. All right, we have those plugged up. I always like to twist mine. You can twist it tighter, which I will do in the final build. The reason why I twist that is just to keep um, those from rattling around in there. It makes it a little bit nicer and neater. Now in the final build, you'll notice these two wires are crossing. I will not have this crossing directly on that because that could create some type of interference between these two wires. So this wire will be going probably in a completely different direction like so. That way it doesn't cross the power. Okay. Now we still need to plug this up because if you notice this mail in can't plug into these two cables. But it can plug into this. Now here's what we're going to do with this. We're going to actually plug this wall we're in first. Let's show you why we're going to do that. The reason why we're going to do that is we need to know What's positive and negative on this? And the problem is we don't know off the top of our head. There is no nothing on there that dictates, hey, this is positive, this is negative. You have to kind of figure that out on your own. Now, I have a pretty good idea which one's positive and negative from doing this for a while, but the only thing that's going to happen if you don't hook this up properly is this amplifier will not turn on. So let's make sure the amplifier is actually on, which it is not, so now it is. And this Bluetooth module will also not turn on. Bluetooth module has an LED light which shows whether it's on. And so now we're gonna hook this up. The best way to check these is to just use a voltmeter. What's gonna happen with the voltmeter is it's gonna read something. Now, first thing, in order to make sure that we're reading it properly, we need to make sure it's on the right setting. So take your voltmeter, and put it on DCV20. When you put on DCV20 with this particular unit, you're going to be able to read something. Now this, when we hook up these, now keep in mind, this does need to be plugged into the wall and plugged into the cable. If it's not plugged into those two things, you're not going to get any readings at all. Okay, so make sure it's plugged in that way. What you're going to do is you're going to take one of these reds, one red, and you're going to connect it to any one of these three terminals. It doesn't matter which one, just any of the three. And you're going to take the negative and you're going to hook it up to another one of these three. What's going to happen is this is going to read a number. If you see that this number has a negative and a positive, which means which would be no negative in front of it. If it says negative 12 volts, that means you have the positive and negative mixed up. Switch them around. If this says 12 volts, it means you have it correctly, your positive and negative. If it says 0, 0.00 volts, it means one of the two connectors that you're on, whether it be this one or this one, is, is not being used for the ground or the positive. 
in your application. So uh, you're not gonna use that one. Remember, like I said, we're only gonna be using two of these. So keep checking with your voltmeter until you see 12 volts. When you do, you'll know which one is positive and which one is negative, and then you'll hook these up. Good to hook it up properly that time. And now we have power to everything, and we have an input. The Bluetooth is working. As soon as we connect a phone to it, we'll have audio out of these. Assuming the amplifier's on and the volume's up. The only thing we did not show, and I do want to show this, is this speaker rocker. The reason why we didn't show this speaker rocker is because I'm not hooking it up right now. Um, this will be hooked up in the final build, and this will be to turn on and off the main power. Now you may say, why do I need this? I already have a power on the Lapai amplifier, which is true. But let's see what happens when we shut off the power on the Lapai amplifier. Okay, the amplifier power shut off. The blue ring's no longer on, which you could see reflecting off me, and, and you could hear it turn off. But look what is still on. The Bluetooth module is still on. And the reason why is because we shut off the power after this. And so we need to create something that can shut off the power before we hit the Bluetooth module. And that's what this is going to be for. It's going to go in here. It's only going to connect to the positive wire, which in this case is yellow. And so we will cut this yellow line somewhere in the middle and connect this in there. And this will then be the main power switch on and off. Rendering the power button on the low pi pretty much useless. I mean, you can still shut off the low pi amplifier by itself if you want to, but you won't get the benefit of shutting the Bluetooth off, so it, it really doesn't make any sense to use it. We're going to use this instead. There are other ways to hook up the power if you wanted to, but this is by far the easiest one for any beginner that's getting into this that doesn't know a lot about electricity. And that's the reason why we're showing you this one. All right, guys, um, when, as soon as we finish, um, we'll show you the next step. The next step actually is, is gonna be cutting the wood. And the wood is actually cut, so we should have that video in a couple days, and we'll, then we'll show you how to assemble it. All right, guys, until next time.